Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and a puzzle today by Grockles, our resident rocket scientist. I, I kid not, Grockles really is a rocket scientist. Um, this is called Divergence and it's been incredibly well rated both on our Discord server and on Logic Masters Germany. Um, it's got a huge rating and a lot of plaudits so we ought to be in for a fine time today and apparently Apparently it is approachable, so it's not the most monstrous puzzle you're ever going to see on Cracking the Cryptic. Um, before we start, quick reminder to check out uh, Patreon, where we publish all sorts of extra content. Uh, and over on Patreon you can join basically the greatest Sudoku club on planet Earth, or indeed any other known planet, even by Grockles. Um, it's a couple of bucks a month, and we think it's well worthwhile. Um, and of course, if you do support us there, thank you so much. You do help to keep the channel going. Um, now, let's get to the rules of Grockles' puzzle. It looks like Little Killer today. So what have we got? We have got normal Sudoku rules apply. Uh, digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in that arrow's circle. So that's normal arrow rules. So that means you add up those three cells, and you put the sum in that cell, etc. Um, clues outside the grid give the sum of the digits along the indicated diagonal. So that means those six cells have to sum up to 15, which is quite a low total actually. Um, and digits may repeat along such a diagonal if allowed by other rules. So that means that what we can do along this diagonal if we wish to is we could put ones into those two squares, for example. There is nothing preventing that. Uh, and you can see that's not against normal Sudoku rules, so that's fine. What you can't do is then do that, because that will just break normal Sudoku rules by having two ones in box two. Don't put two ones in box two, you'll get the puzzle wrong. Um, so with that said, do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And I think we're probably going to get cracking by the sort of well-trusted method of looking at three cell arrows look in fact I've just noticed there's right there's, there's probably more we can do with three cell arrows but all of these arrows here um, are all in the same boxes so that means we have to put different digits into the blue cells those three digits have to be different and if that's the case even if we make them minimal with one two and three we're still going to get six at least in each of the circles. So let's start off with that and see if that tells us anything crucial. Um, not sure immediately what that's telling us. We've got a 31 diagonal here, but actually each of these arrows, these sort of bent arrows from the middle or around the central square, this one this one, this one, and this one. I think they all interact with a little killer clue. So I'm going to investigate the biggest and littlest uh, little killer clues. I think that's probably the way to do this. So if we try this one, the maximum I could make those three squares, because they're on an arrow, is nine. I can't put a number bigger than nine in here. That means these, ah, oh yeah, here we go. That means those three squares have to add to at least 22. And that means we, there must be a nine in this triplet in this triple here and you can't put nine on an arrow it won't work because you'll ha end up having to put a double digit number into the circle so nine goes into the grid and that might matter let's have a look um, let's put the options in for these squares which are either going to be five eight oh well no actually I was about to say they're either five eight or six seven but that relies on that adding to 22 if these are lower, if these are lower than nine, these might have to add up to as much as 24. So they're 22, 23 or 24. It doesn't affect what we can pencil mark into them, but I've got to bear in mind they might not be the bare minimum. Uh, now that, oh yeah, hang on. Look, this one's on a three cell arrow, so that can never be a seven or an eight. The maximum value of this is five or six, which means that this can't now add up to 24 the maximum value it has now is 23 so the minimum value this has now is 8 so this is either 8 or 9 which means we can get rid of 6 and 7 from this square um, 
so also what do we need this to be then eight or nine so this is either now 22 or 23 so if it's 22 this can never be five anymore or six they would be too low okay so this is either five six eight or it's 22 with this being effectively the lowest digit of the 22 and this being the middle digit of the 22 and this being the top digit of the 22. That means this square looks got to be 8 or 9 because it's on an arrow with, uh, with a 7 or an 8 on it. So we're sort of slowly whittling away at these totals. Let's have a look at the other one. We've got this, this, this is the smallest one. Now we know those three squares have to add up to a minimum of six, which means these squares have a maximum value of eight, which means there must be a one on that threesome. Um, we know these squares are either, they have a maximum value of five, because if we can't, make the total larger than eight. Eight could be one, two, five, or one, three, four. Seven's one, two, four, and six is one, two, three. In any case, we're never using a digit higher than five. I'm actually now wondering whether what I'm meant to do is to use the 15. Yeah, this is weird, actually. Let me just think about this, because I'm noticing now that there is sort of an interesting There's an interesting interaction between the 15 and the 14 arrows. So if we make this a minimum, if we make that one, two, and three, these three squares would have to add up to nine. So these are adding up to nine or less, and these are adding up to, what was it? Um, eight or less. So that means so if these are adding up to nine maximum and these are adding up to eight maximum that's 17 for those five squares but double counting the central square which means that but we know that those five squares together could only add up to 15 as a minimum. So this square, given it cannot, given that these squares together, if we double count the middle one, cannot add up to more than 17, this square has to be, this middle square has to be a one or a two. Uh, because if it's three, let me just explain that so everyone is, is on the same page. If it's three in the middle here, then we would have a minimum of 15 in the in the five cells. But double counting this three would give us 18, but which is impossible. These cannot add up to 18 because that's going to force these to have to be too low. Um, so there's only one degree of freedom here. Now... Oh, hang on. Hang on a minute. I see. This is very clever. This is very clever. It's not enough to just consider this and this together. I've actually got to now consider the 31 as well, because if I do make those one, two and three, I've broken this arrow. Because what's the minimum I'll put into those two squares? Four and five. Now four plus five is nine plus this square is at least ten and that breaks this circle. So that's not going to work ever. So the only way this can work, and I'm hoping it actually does work, is with one, two, four here, which is seven. So now we know these are adding up to eight. We know these have a, so we know, we know these squares here have to add up to eight or less. These squares here have to add up to eight or less. So how on earth are we going to do that given this is double counted? Well, the only way that will work is one, two, in some order, one, two, three, four, and five in these squares and double counting the one. So we get a one here, 
we can get rid of the ones in these squares. These squares have got to be 2, 3, 4 and 5. This is definitely a 1, 2, 4 triple. Now this is really nice because now we actually know the value of this square. So we've got a similar thing to this square going on in this square. Because what are we going to put in those two squares? We're going to have to keep this arrow down to a single digit total. But we only have the digits 3 and 5 available as the next lowest digits given we can't use 1, 2 and 4. So this must be a 3, 5 pair with a 1 in the middle. This must be a 9. Um, that means 9 is vertical in column 5 there, look. These are, hang, hang on, we can go further. These squares have to add up to 8 because I can't make them add up to anything less. Um, without forcing these to be too high. <laughs> so everything's sort of balanced out. It's, it's called divergence. It should almost be called convergence. So these are adding up to eight. So these have to add up to six in order to make that 14 work. Oh, hang on. And we know that that's an eight, don't we? So that is eight. Wasn't even seeing this circle particularly there. I was thinking more about the 15 clue. Um, so now 8 must be horizontal. Oh, 8's horizontal in box, in box 4. So 8's looking at this square, which becomes a 9. Wow, okay. Um, now 9 by Sudoku goes here. And what does this mean? It means that we can... I've never even looked at the 29 clue either. I've got to look at that in a moment. In fact... Oh, hang on. There's something going on with the 29 clue, isn't there? 20. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Once this becomes 1, 2 and 3, what's the maximum value of those three squares? Well, it's 20. If I put 3, 8, 9 into those squares, which is the most I can put in, that's 20. But these can't be. Uh, we can't make this less than 20 because this would have to add up to more than 9. And it can't because it's on an arrow. So this does add up to 9, which means that's a 9. This does add up to 20, which means that's a 3. And this is an 8, 9 pair. And we know the order. So 9s and 8s go in. 9 goes here, 9 goes in one of those squares. How many 9s have I got in the grid? 7. Oh, I see. Right, I've just got a little X-wing of 9s left in boxes 1 and 2. Um, this, uh, this adds up to 9. So this is either 5, 1, 3 or 6, 1, 2. And there's probably something telling us which of those is correct. We do know for sure there's a one in one of those two positions. Now, what do we look at next, I ask? Can we, can we conclude anything else? I have a horrible feeling we're about to have to do lots of Sudoku. Um, and in a Sudoku video, you would think I would be more confident about that part. Eight, look, has to be in one of these two squares. So eight's in one of those three positions. Two, four. Can we tidy up this at all? We know these, one of these is going to be a three, four pair. One of them is a two, five pair. But I don't think we know which is which, do we? Perhaps we do, but oh, no, I don't think we do. We do we explicitly, we're able to repeat digits on the diagonal. So, um, okay, we're gonna have to find something else. 16 on this diagonal. That doesn't seem terribly profitable to me. Um, no, and we don't seem to know terribly much about sevens either, do we? So, ones in this box 
there's a little point around ones. Ones are forced into one of those four squares in box seven. So they're definitely not in these three squares. And the ones in box eight, look, are in these two squares. So they're definitely not in those squares. So the one in row eight of the grid is going to have to be in box nine. Um, now, what else can we do here? That's the question. Can we do something with this arrow? Or this arrow, or indeed any other arrow? What are we going to do? We're going to have to... Um, eights in box two are locked into one of two places. It's funny, we don't actually know that much about many digits here, it seems to me. Six in this box has to be in one of two places. Um, ah! I don't know is the answer. What are we missing? I've not even looked at this one, actually. Hang on, maybe we can look at this one. What are the options for this? This doesn't seem very restricted. I mean, I can see it can't be nine, but it could be, I mean, it could be quite a small number, I think, without any pro pro problems at all. So. Okay, don't know. Uh, well, it's good to get stuck, although even on approachable puzzles, it's a little bit disconcerting. This, these four squares here are six, sevens, eights, and nines, aren't they? Let's remove the eights from those two squares. Is that telling us anything? We can get rid of the nine from those two squares. So this becomes a six or a seven. Um, wow, I'm not sure. I am not sure. I'm not sure what to do. Oh, this is awful. What are we going to do? How are we going to finish this? What have we not appreciated? I keep wanting to use this three, for example, to get rid of a three from this diagonal, but I don't think I can do that. Right. What we'll have to do is we will have to check these diagonals again. What have I missed here? This one, two pair, is that doing anything? I suppose, yeah, hang on. That's putting a two in one of those three squares because we can't put twos in these squares. Oh, oh, it's not that. Oh, that's vicious. Oh my goodness me. Okay. Okay, here is a question. Where does three go in row five of the grid? It's not here because we know that three is in one of those squares. I don't think it can be here because this can't be a one. So this is not a three. This is not a three. Here we go. So three is in one of those two squares, which means it's not on this diagonal. Good grief. So now that becomes a six, which makes this a six by Sudoku. Now we've got a seven, eight pair here, look. Which that feels like it might be mightily important. Um, this diagonal added up to 22, didn't it? So now this square's got to be a seven. That becomes a two. Ah, that becomes a two, that becomes a four. This two is seeing, oh my goodness me. Suddenly I feel like we're getting somewhere here. Um, oh, I see. God, great. This, this row is the key. It's the key. Let's, because now I can use the one, two pair here. Where does the two go in row five? Not there. Not here. Must be here. I don't think that does very much, but it's still satisfying to see it. 
Uh, six has got to be vertical in this box down here now. Don't know if that's been there for a while, but um, that means it's not there. And it's not there. Okay, that doesn't seem to do very much. Um, now, maybe this square, that's become a bit more restricted than it used to be. Yeah, this square is very restricted. It can't be one, two, three, six, seven, eight, or nine. That's a four or a five. So this square can't be a five. Ah, and it can't be a four because this square can't be a one. So if this is four, this is double. Oh, if this is four, this is double two. I don't know if that's possible. And if it's five, it's got to be a two three pair. So this can't be this can't be four because double two is impossible. So it must be five. This must be three because it can't be one or two. That becomes a two. That means this is a five to make this add up to eight. This has now got to be a three four pair. Whoops which may not be resolved but that definitely feels like more more of the sort of progress we were after and those two squares look have got to be their own three four pair which means these two squares become a five eight pair and that's useful with this five there so that five and eight go into the grid eight's in one of those squares by sudoku eight is not here anymore this 5 is fixing the 3 5 at the top. Which means there's a 5 6 pair now all of a sudden in box 8, along with a 7 and a 4 pair, which this 4 helps with. 4 is in one of those two squares. 7 is ruled out of that square. Okay. One has to live in one of these squares. Now, how are we doing now in terms of everything? I feel like it. it we've used up all the... Oh, I haven't used that 16 clue. Have I used every other diagonal clue? Are we... I think... Ver oh, this 2 can be tidied up a bit more. We can get the 2 and the 1. That gives us a 1 over here. That's worth doing. Um... So this row needs threes, fours, and sixes to finish it. So this is a four or a six, and this is a three or a six. This, oh, look at this column. It needs just six and eight, and there's a six here. So this has got to be eight. This is six. That's seven, that's nine, that's eight, and that's beautiful. That gives us an eight, eight all of a sudden. Um, now let's have a look along here then where we need threes fours and sevens so this square is a naked single I think sees four and seven in its column that gives us the six gives us the four gives us the seven in the column gives us the three gives us the four three lives over here somewhere um, I'm almost at the point now where I feel confident I should be able to do this diagonal. Let's think about that. Can we get... It would be nice to get at least get one digit on this diagonal before we just sort of had to guess what was on it, wouldn't it? Maybe we can do more. Maybe this row. One's, oh yeah, where does two go in that row? It's got to be here. So this is a 1-5 pair, which we can do. One has to live in one of those squares. Five, five is exactly in that, that square. Oh, five is in one of three places here. Let's try this column. We need four, five, and seven. Bobbins is the expression we're looking for. This is a four or a five. This is a four or a seven. And this is any of those digits. Uh, this column. 3, 4, and 7. Again, ah, that's a 3 or a 4. That's a 4 or a 7. Oh, there, there you go. That's a weirdity. There's a 4, 7 pair in row 1. So we need 1s, 6s, and 9s into the balance of the squares. 
I can see that square can't be 6. So that's 1 or 9, and that's on this diagonal. Ah, perfect. There you go. So now we can see this cannot be a 1, because then I can't make those add up to 15, given this is only a 4 or a 5. So that's a 9. These two squares add up to 7. And this can't be a 5, because that can't be a 2. Perfect. So that's a 4. That's a 3. That's a 7. That's a 4. That's a 3. That means we still need 7 in this column. Let's put that in. This square's got to be a 5 to complete it. The 5 and the 6 go in. Boom. Where does 6 go? One of those two cells, I think. Um, let's delete the 3 from this cell. Delete the 9 from this square. And I'm hoping... Well, we should be able to get those two squares. They're a 2-5 pair. So these squares are a 1-6 pair which this 6 is useful for. Good. 6, 1, 1. 6 and 7 we can do. Just using this little 7 here. 6 goes here now by Sudoku. We still need 2, 3 and 4. This square's a naked single. It's a 4. It sees 2 and 3 in the row. That finishes off the 4 and the 3. Gives us the 3 and the 2. Uh, we need a 1 and a 7 here. Yeah, I think it's done, isn't it? I think it's done. 8, and that should be a 4. That's a beautiful little puzzle. It really is. Yes, and it's correct. So there was a, there was a few tricks in that. We had to get the... We had to sort of build up to understanding how these arrows interacted with their diagonals. And then there was a very nice bit of logic involving this square here being double counted, if you like, in the 15 and the 14 combinations, and therefore having to be very low. And then we got rid of the degree of freedom here somehow. Oh, I know. I think it was something to do with this. Oh, yeah, it was this arrow needing to add up to a single digit total. And that was lovely. And then, then we made some progress. And then there was a vicious, a vicious thing. I think I didn't see anything better than wondering where, where three went in row five. That took me ages to see that. But once you spot that, you're away because you get this diagonal figured out. And once you get that diagonal, it seems like lots of digits seem to go in. Beautiful from Grockles, as usual. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.